You are listening to Grim and Stone, The Mountain Perspective. This podcast may contain objectionable language. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Grim and Stone, The Mountain Perspective. This is our take on what's happening in the world. How you doing, Stoney? I'm doing all right for a Monday morning. There you go, bud. It snowed last night. Yeah, I saw that. Weather dog came back in and told me. Weather dog. Yeah, my uh, my dog came in and she was just cold. A little mm-hmm. bit damp. Uh, so what's going on? Anything? Anything new and exciting? Oh, I've got lots of good news for you today. Oh, okay. What do you got? <laughs> well, let's start right off the bat. The bat. Hey, there we go. Er. Right off the bat with uh, Batman. 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 The Dark Knight. Uh, no, no. We're talking old school. Oh, the, like Adam West old like school? The, like the gray costume with the uh, the blue hood and the cape. Yeah. A man in Bradford, England, West Yorkshire, okay. dressed as Batman, brought in a local wanted suspect. Okay. Now, <laughs> police said the the person who brought the man in dressed in full Batman outfit, uh, his identity is unknown. Now, there's people there who believe they know who this Batman is, but they're not going to tell. <laughs> yes, they they refuse to tell. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's a picture of him that the police released from the, uh, the, uh, foyer lobby of the local police station. And there he is, uh, Thursday with his Batman costume on, handing the suspect over. Nice. Yeah. It doesn't say whether or not the police plan on, uh, let him continue to do their job, but, uh, that, Kudos to Batman. Well, hey, Batman's a friggin' superhero. So. Brought in the bad guy. There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, and then we come back across the water to uh, Massachusetts. Police were called to the scene of uh, shots fired, and they found a suspect vehicle and found it and followed it. And during the chase, the suspect vehicle pulled away. Guy in the back seat jumps out, buries something in the snowbank, and starts to leave, but the cops cut him off. Once backup arrived, they let the canine out and uh, had him search the car, found a bullet casing. So they told him, well, find the, find the gun. Well, the dog runs right over to the snowbank and starts digging in the snowbank, found the gun, and shot it. <laughs> <laughs> the dog shot, pulled the trigger. The dog, the dog pulled the trigger. <laughs> Apparently, this this canine is trained when he's looking for uh, something. When he finds it, he's trained to paw. So, when he found the gun... Uh, apparently he pawed to indicate it and pulled the trigger. Did, he didn't get hurt, did he? No, nobody was hurt. Okay, good. Uh, good. But it, <laughs> <laughs> it does say that the dog, Ivan, uh, along with the suspects and police, were startled, but nobody was hurt. <laughs> Find it, boy. Find it. Bang! Found it. <laughs> oh, man. Goodness gracious. And then we go to... uh... (laughs) Poor dog. From Batman to gunfiring dogs. Wow. Now let's go continue our travels westward and go to China. China? Yes. Uh, We're over the place. Chinese resident... Jan Fang. Jan Fang? Uh, divorced and sued his wife for 120000 Jan Fang. Hold on. Are, you're uh, like Cyloning. Divorced and sued right his now. wife for $120,000 U.S. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. You okay. 
Hello? There test, we go. Test. Okay. That sounds a little better. So Mr. Fang divorces his wife, Suzer, for $120,000 U.S., and he wins. Um, she gave birth to a little baby girl, and he was so horrified at how ugly the baby was, he demanded to know who the father could be. Well, it turns out that uh, Mrs. Fang did not cheat on Mr. Fang. So he's the producer of The Ugly Baby. Yeah, he's the producer of The Ugly Baby. However, it was discovered in his during his lawsuit that she had spent up to a $100,000 in South Korea having massive plastic surgery. Well, the judge granted him his case, gave him the $120,000 along with the divorce because his wife was ugly and she covered it up. Oh, he did. Oh, I see. He didn't know she was ugly because when he met her, she was already all fixed up. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, the the ugly baby gave her away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I I was I was stationed with a girl one time. I'm mean, very cute. I mean, absolutely adorable. And uh, she kept her old driver's license from before her plastic surgery. I mean, she wasn't, like, stunning, modelish, but, I mean, just very cute girl next door look. But then you looked at the driver's license of her prior to her surgery. Mm -hmm. Oofa. She was rough. And, uh, yeah, that would, that would, wow. That's, <laughs> that's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. $120,000 because she was ugly. She was ugly. And we're going we're gonna to stick with Asia for a moment before right. I go back, turn it back to you. <laughs> this headline is, okay, I'm just going to go with the story. Japanese chef cooks and serves his own genitals. <laughs> Okay, if you could see my face right now. <laughs> Seriously? Mao Sugiyama, a self-described asexual from Tokyo, uh, cooked up and served his own genitals to five diners. Um, That's a lot of genitals. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Dude must have been packing. In most cases, asexual is a word used to describe a person who's non-sexual. You know, I use that to describe myself because I don't really cons think about these things. Right, okay. Um, you know, no libido and all that. Well, this guy wanted to go a step further and actually, this is, this is who I am. So he put a, a tweet out on April 8th of last year. Uh, and apparently it took a while for it to catch on, but it did. Uh, says, please retweet. I'm offering my male genitals, full penis, testes, scrotum, as a meal for 100,000 yen. We'll prepare and cook as the buyer requests at his chosen location. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay, now, so, okay, now that's that's weird enough on its own. Okay. Mm -hmm. but let me get this right. There were actually takers. Oh yeah, five of them. <laughs> so, so they knew what the hell they were eating. Yeah, yep. I'm I'm never going to Japan. <laughs> and that's a shame because I love Japanese women. But no, no, no. Yeah, whole new twist on sushi there. Oh, hey, God bless America. That's horrible. That's <laughs> nasty, nasty people. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just gonna quit all my head and turn it over to you now. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay. Um, got some bad news. Let's let's. Oh, good lord. Going from penis sushi to this. 
Um, <laughs> sorry, Bobby Rogers. Uh, uh, Bobby Rogers, a founding member of the Motown group The Miracles, and a songwriting collaborator with uh, Smokey Robinson, died Sunday. At his suburban uh, Detroit home, he was 73. So... We're losing a lot of those. We're losing a lot of the Motown greats. I mean, we've, that's, that's the, what, the third Motown great we've lost. We lost, what, two last month, and this is the, the first of this month. Yeah. I mean, uh, granted, uh, that era of music and those pioneers are starting to get a little bit older. But wow, I mean, 73. Again, that's old, but that's not going to the grave old. And, uh, let's see, he had been ill for several years, so apparently this was, I'm not going to say it was expected, but, uh, that's a shame. So, you know, lost, lost Bobby Rogers. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, Bobby. And let's see here. Um, oh, this is a fun one. Probably should have done this one after the friggin' penis story good god um i'm gonna have nightmares from that uh well i've got more of the penis stories no want them no 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 i'm I'm good i just can't god it's that's that's terrible i mean it's bad enough dude offers the offers it up but somebody actually took him up on it um let's see here uh in uh new york let me make sure I get my location correct here. I believe, yeah, Times Square. Yeah, like right in the heart of the shit. Uh, they have an inflatable colon in Times Square. And this is, <laughs> it, I felt it was appropriate because, oh, yeah. well, that is the, the asshole, you know, of the country. And, um, <laughs> this is to, uh, promote, uh, rectal colon. Uh, cancer. So initially people will like walk up and they're kind of like, Ooh, um, uh, what the hell? But eventually they go in and they walk through. Now, now it's actually, it is actually a good thing. It's, it's a bit odd, but inside the, uh, the inflatable colon, they have, uh, depictions of colon disease and, uh, people are actually talking about it they're going through and apparently people are going and getting checked because of this so i mean i guess that's a good thing but uh what was funny was is one of the uh promoters of this uh she was standing out in front of it and she's trying to you know give a little uh little information to somebody and she she starts laughing and it's because her brother was inside the colon making farting noises. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, but, uh, I mean, any, anything that'll, you know, uh, bring awareness to cancer of, of any kind and, you know, help people, you know, go get checked. I guess this is a good thing, but I just felt it was apropos that they have a giant inflatable colon in Times Square. Um, <laughs> The California news. Hey, foreign news. Foreign news. I did not bother to link this. This I, this is all I have to say on this one. Lindsay Lohan refuses rehab and claims that she won't go to jail. Uh, Charlie Sheen says that he wants to help her. This is a train wreck. Uh, it, blind leading the blind, pot calling the kettle black. However you want to refer to it. It's, it's, a, it's a mess. <laughs> okay. In sports news. Let's see. Female kicker, uh, on Silberman. Silberman. My, is my page not loading? No, I don't want the video. Go away. Cause it's a horrible video. Let's see. Female, let's see. Fellow female kicker on Silberman. She was terrible. All right. Lauren Silberman uh, was uh, one of 38 kickers to take part in the league's uh, New York, New Jersey regional scouting. And uh, she kicked the ball twice. She was, you know, trying out to be a kicker. And uh, 
in her two attempts to kick the ball, she, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, a grand total of 30 yards combined. Uh, yeah. And she was claiming that it was, uh, because of an aggravated quad injury that she suffered uh, in practice last week. Mm-hmm. In practice. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I've... <laughs> you know, you're going to show up to something like this, and you're a non-traditional participant. You better bring your friggin' A game. Yeah. I mean, she's... By her poor performance... She's going to set back any chance of uh, women, you know, actually getting in and playing. I mean, I don't personally, I don't know. I mean, I'm five, six, right? I'm, I'm a small guy and uh, I'm too tiny to play pro ball. I'm too old now, too. But uh, back when I was in my prime, I knew better than to play. I didn't even play you know, semi-pro or any of that because, I mean, I love football, but I would have gotten crushed. And, you know, what's the one player on teams that the other team always loves to crush? That's the kicker. Yep. Yeah, so I, whatever, Chicky, you come out and you, well, she's obviously not going to get a get a spot. That's for damn sure. <laughs> no. I mean, like I said, when you're a non-traditional, you know, participant, you 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 should bring your friggin' A game. That was just ridiculous. Thirty yards grand total. Um, in weather, I I, I loved this this morning. I, I found it, and but uh, we're gonna go to Racine, Wisconsin. It's 28 degrees, wind is uh, 12 miles per hour, uh, east by southeast. Humidity is 63 percent, and the dew point is 19 Fahrenheit. And according to reporter uh, Angelica Duria from Fox News Channel 6 from Milwaukee, uh, she was out there at uh, 3 o'clock this morning till about 9.30 this morning or something along those lines. And uh, when they finally got her on the uh, local show to where she could, you know, give her spot, she said that she'd finally run out of things. And, and this here's, a, you know, things to say about it, but... Uh, Here's her quote. It's, it is snowing and it sucks here. So <laughs> I, I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, welcome to Racine. It sucks here. It sucks. <laughs> All right. Being the Monday edition of, uh, of, uh, the Mountain Perspective, it's walking dead time. <laughs> what did you think of last night's episode? It was okay. I I uh, I wasn't doing backflips or or jumping up and down screaming in outrage, but uh, I liked the storyline. It was just a little slow for me. Uh, I'm I'm not a drama hound, so understood. Understood. The yeah. storyline just it, it it was good. It covered some things. Uh, I was happy to see that uh, uh, Michonne got some brownie points. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Other than other than that, it was just a little too slow for me. See, for me though, I I, I really enjoyed the episode because it answered the question of what the hell happened to Morgan, and um, I was real excited to see him. Too bad he's batshit crazy. And, I mean, you can't blame him, though. I mean, Christ, his wife, or Walker wife, kills his son because he couldn't kill her back when he had the opportunity. Yeah? You know, there's a lot of guilt there, I would imagine. And But then again, you know, like, you know, you and I talked about it a little bit last night. Um, that was back at the beginning. You know, and we really weren't sure at that point what the hell was going on. All we knew is people were coming back from the dead and what, you know, what the hell is this? So, but, uh, I don't know. I, I, I was, I was glad to see Morgan, but I, I really wish he would have been able to come back with Rick because 
I, there's I, a lot of I cutting like. out here. Well, I'm, I'm cutting out? Yeah, a lot. Okay, I think it's your end. Oh, okay. But, uh, no, it's, that, I, 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 there were quite a few pucker factor moments during the episode. I, I, I like that. <laughs> but, uh, no, you're right. It was, it, it wasn't one of the, the faster paced episodes, but it was more of a answer questions, uh, fill in the gaps kind of thing. But they, yeah. but they kept it, you know, like I said, with, you know, a little bit of pucker factor when uh, Carl's trying to get that picture and dude comes up from behind the bar. Uh, oh, oh, when Michonne came out of the bar after with the picture and she had her arm behind her back, I, I, in my mind, I knew she got bit and that was the end of her. She was just playing it up for the boy to give him the picture and trying to do something good with her last moments before she turns and then come to find out that she saved some the hell was that? Some paper mache ugly cat. ass cat thing. <laughs> and she saved it because it was just too damn gorgeous or something. I oof, I don't know. <laughs> They're all going crazy. They're all going crazy. But yeah, you're right though. It was it was nice it was nice to see that uh you know, she may have actually you know, she she became a little more human. Yeah. You know, she, she letting that wall down a little, a little bit, which was nice to see. Yep. And, and did you notice in her face, because she's always had that very hard, you know, stoic look on her face when she relaxed her face a little and actually be, started to become, she, she's a very beautiful woman. Definitely a, a different look for her a different uh, a different stance as far as personality goes oh yeah but you know speaking of zombies if if i can jump in here sure 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 you know zombies on tv um i just found a montana news story of all things oh no viewers of the steve wilco show on montana's krtv had their broadcast interrupted on monday uh this was a couple of weeks ago <laughs> By an audio warning that said, bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Do not approach or apprehend these bodies as they are extremely dangerous. <laughs> uh, four people called police. <laughs> <laughs> Was this part of the show? Or? Uh, no, no. Apparently, the story goes that uh, the Montana Television Network... Uh, said that, uh, that, you know, sorry about that. The emergency alert system at this one particular station <laughs> was hacked. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm thinking, do we have one of these in reserve waiting so, for the moment that it happens? <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't have TV here, but uh, I, I think it's interesting that, that the story is in Montana, they hacked into the emergency alert system and announced a, the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> One thing I think we should explain to people is, you know, we talk about The Walking Dead, and we then we say, you know, probably we don't have TV. Um, so how are we watching The Walking Dead? We watch it on the Internet. We have a website we go to. We watch it. And uh, so that's how we're able to watch different shows and whatever is through the Internet. So no, we do, we do not own a TV. There's no TVs anywhere on the property, but uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> great. I was just thinking, oh my god, we somebody at the emergency broadcasting system has they've got a zombie announcement just waiting. <laughs> Canned announcement. Canned announcement just waiting. It's gonna happen, man. I tell you, it's gonna happen. It's the zombie button, man. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, hell. Well, let's see. We're about time to wind this thing down. Um, this is what, our third? Our third, yes. Our third on uh, SoundCloud and YouTube. And after today, we will be exclusively on YouTube. I'll put a link down in the, down in the doobly-doo below. So, uh, 
So thank you, SoundCloud, for this, this opportunity. And, but we're going to go strictly with YouTube and that'll make it easier for me to just upload stuff one time instead of having to do it twice. But, uh, all right. I think that about covers it. Oh, I think we covered more than enough today. <laughs> yeah. I, you sure you yeah. don't want the rest of those penis stories? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yeah, from now on, we'll be uh, on YouTube at uh, uh, Grimalkin's uh, Machinima. And uh, also, I'll, I put, no, I think that's the only place I put it. I don't, I don't put it on the Fiddling Grim site, do I? I don't recall. Uh, no, I think it was just on Facebook. Okay. Or YouTube. I YouTube? Guess YouTube, yeah. Okay. All righty, and uh, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon, Stone, and we'll talk to the rest of you uh, Thursday. 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 All right. Have yourselves a good week, and we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.